You know, when I came down, there was, um, you know, Tony Ring, Steve Bishop, um, Maxi, Big Dave Forrest, Tomo, Mark Thomas, um, Wheels, Fitzy, um, Spanner, you know, which is City's brother. Um, Cam McLean was playing back then. Carl Seister, Sudsy, um, Styles, Fiala. You know, the, there's four of us that all, all started the same year. Um, yeah, it was just... As I said, it was it was just good fun. I remember in that first year, um, we were struggling for numbers like we were for, for quite a few years. And you know, we grabbed Vinnie Burke came down to watch us play. And we ended up, he's got a can in his hand, cigarette in the other hand, we've grabbed him and he's played full forward in his bloodstones. Yeah, it was just as it, that was just what we did back then. You know, guys weren't registered, but no one gave a shit because we weren't going to win, win the flag. So it was just about making up numbers and, and having a bit of a bit of fun. It was good. At that time, it was run by uh, Darren Hall. Darren and um, Phil Mason. Phil Mason is an amazing um, man to me. He, uh, to a lot of people, he's been an inspiration to a, a massive amount of young men. And um, he was definitely in his twilight and was you know an old Tommy Hafey figure, really. You know and um, I think he'd like me um, calling him Toby Haffey. But um, I thought it was an opportunity to keep playing with him just a little bit longer, you know. I, I could, I'd love that, you know. And um, and Phil did play on for a few more games and he sporadically popped in and it was great. And um, yeah, so Darren and Phil were still just trying every single week to just drag people together. And there was blokes out there who weren't footballers. There were blokes out there that we thought would have heart attacks. There, it, it wasn't... There wasn't a competitive football side, it was definitely a social football side. The guys came to me and said, can you play on the weekend? And I was like, yeah, I can play on the weekend. And I rocked on down and once again, it was terrible and it felt like it was home, you know, like it was, we got, got out there, I borrowed someone's jumper, I borrowed someone's shorts and we went out there and we just had a ball. And um, I was sold on it immediately. And um, there was another a funny part to it where, um, I had a great day. It was the you know it was I was sold, and then um, Corey McGrath, who I've played football with since junior, and Corey's a, a stalwart of the club. He's never not played. He's played since we were kids right through, you know. And um, Brad Crosland, who's uh, uh, the assistant coach this year, he um, I said, uh, Corey, you want to play vets? And he said, I'll play if you play. And I said, I'll play if Crosby plays. And Crosby went, Yeah, I'll play. And Corey and I looked at each other and went, whoa, okay, we're going to start playing vets again. And uh, we all had to go home to our wives and tell them that we'd made this stupid pact that we're all going to play vets. And, um, and it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. No, I'd thought about playing vets and then still seeing Whitey, you know, a lot because he's a good mate. Um, I just I said, oh, I'm thinking about playing vets. And I remember his reaction was arsehole because he said, well, if I'm playing, he's playing. So then um, and he had to convince um, Becker that he was going to come play vets. So I'm not sure if he did. I think he just snuck away and started training. And, and that was the end of that, started playing, yeah. So it was good fun, though. I just remember it was good fun, just getting out there and, and just running around again. Blindsided by a, a friendship with a coach here at South Croydon Whitey, um, basically through his cafe. I used to go down there and have me hang over a big breakfast on a Sunday and a coffee. And... Yeah, we, we had a bit of a friendship down there. And, of course, I was at Croydon. He knew that. He was at South Croydon. Uh, we'd always see each other at when the two teams played each other and have a beer together, talk rubbish. And one day he said to me, how old are you? I said, oh, 32 later in the year. He goes, you're old enough to play vets next year. And it's hadn't crossed my mind. 2011, I came down to South Croydon Vets. Uh, finally turned up to a pre-season. Like, uh, there was a few blokes floating around, not many. <laughs> we were, uh, I think the reason why Whitey was keen to get me involved was um, to try and boy the numbers as much as possible. Uh, we, had, we only had, you know, sometimes we had five blokes at training. Um, but five blokes at training can do a five star handball, and that's all it takes because it's not about. 
it's not about how skillful we are, how much we're going to win, how many numbers we've got. It was about getting together as grown men who should probably know better, um, getting a bit of exercise and, and breaking that uh, mental uh, routine of be it family or work life to just do something different, do something for me. So we get to round one, the team gets read out and I'm named as the rover and so I go to him with the senior mentality of so who am I changing with? Oh no one changes, we've only got 18 blocks. Like, who, who am I going to rest with? Who am I going to swap with? Someone in the forward pocket? He goes, no no you just row all day. And like I've never had a, the sorest body because I was playing on ball and I was trying to be prove something, you know, new player, you get an AFL footballer changes from one club to another and he suddenly becomes a better footballer than what he got traded out of and he, you know, the opposition are going He was shit at bloody Geelong, why is he so good at bloody Melbourne? Because yeah, you know, he's trying to prove something, so I've turned up trying to prove something. So I'm in and under trying to run to every contest and just body is just getting smashed. Um, because I had to sit there for uh, four quarters and there was no break because there was no option on the bench because the bloke who was running the bench was actually sitting in the forward pocket. Um, but it was great fun. Uh, and the boys had talked the whole pre-season about how we're going to get smashed in the first game. We sing the song and didn't even know the bloody words. We won. It was the only game we won for the year, but we beat one turn of south. And, uh, yeah, had a great time. And that's when I discovered I love vets because... If you're the best on ground, the opposition give you a six pack of beer. Well, I work in real estate, so I was doing an appraisal for Hawley, and um, he was talking about the vets footy. He said, come down, have a kick, and I said, yeah, I'll think about it. And one day he got me down for a night game uh, with Glenn Archer, played the team, and I had a shocking night, but it was good fun. And that's where it really stuck from there. So. Yeah, Roachie, he said, look, come down, playing for a team. It's not the best team in the world, but Come for a run, see how we go. And he was pretty much right, it wasn't the best team in the world. But uh, it was a good bunch of blokes and yeah, went on from there pretty much. Training was, well, it was probably lucky to be a handful of us really. Um, and it was the same crew pretty much every Wednesday night and it was always the ring-ins for the game Sunday. The vibe was pretty good actually, wasn't it? It was actually really fun. You, you would turn up, you didn't really care if you got smashed. But it was a get out, it was a release point for, for me, it was a release point. You come out, you, you have a muck around with your mates, a um, few beers after training, pizza, whatever it is, you play some footy, and then the drink, you know, family can come along, it's good for them, they enjoy it. Um, it was actually really, really fun. And it, it was kind of a culture where you go, yep, I want to hang around. Senior footy, it's to do with money and the glory and whatever else, but then here it was a, just a, to get out on the ground and have a kick with your mates. Yeah. Yep. We'd been thrashed, thrashed the week before, I think by Upper Ferntree Gully, I think I might be wrong, but thrashed, hurty thrashed. <laughs> and um, then we um, didn't even get a side up the following game and um, we called it. We got everyone in and said, this is, this is the turning point. Either we fold this club and the blokes like Darren Mason and uh, so Phil Mason and Darren Hall and... Um, all those guys that had come before us, their hard work and their legacy of what they left and what they built around this football club would just be laid down in the mud and that would be it, you know. And um, I was really passionate and, and I'm fairly passionate about it now talking about it, but I felt that um, I felt that the football club was more than that and I felt that some of the guys around me didn't take it as seriously as maybe they should and um or understand or or not understand what they could get out of it as much as they were should you know and um we called it and we said we're either going to fold this football club and that would have you know destroyed a lot of people around the, the the community or we could um make a change and make a, a make a real sacrifice and say this is what we want to do and everyone put their hand up and said no no we should do this and um, that was probably a pivotal time in my life at the football club when I realised that these guys said they wanted to do it and I'd sort of made them say they wanted to do it. You know, I chaired that meeting and, and I was the spokesperson at that meeting and then um, 
I'm very proud that I held him to it. And um, a lot of guys, I, I was motivated by the guys putting their hand up. And once again, when we're talking about that, that joy, it was just, all I did was just help them realise that they'd said they wanted to do it. Um, we were coming up against Baronia. We already had low numbers as it was. And then the powers to be decided that because Baronia were a um, fired, breathing, lightning striking team that they were, that uh, we should forfeit, which didn't sit well with me because I've never forfeited a game of footy in my life. Yeah. Uh, and pretty much sort of put out there, do we play on from from that game on? Do we yeah. follow the club? Um, a few of us stood up and pretty much passionately told them that we were not going to fold the club and that we were going to play on and and pretty much made us into what we are today. Yeah. 2012, I think we only won the one game, which was a game where, yeah, Lucas, Gibby, Crosby turned up to join their mate Crapper, the uh, the new leader of the of the crew. Um, and... And yeah, we we rolled Churnside out here at Chowing Park, um, which they were actually a team that was up and about and nearly making finals. Um, and it was a upset victory across the league. The vets would be training at uh, at a Pembroke Secondary College, which is now no longer there. Um, and I went walked up and spoke to the. The man with the dreadlocks, Whitey, um, and he said, yeah, come along, mate. We can use all the help we can get. First game back after 10 years of not playing footy, ended up fluking the ball into my hands and my first kick wobbled through for a goal and we actually beat um, Churnside Park and it was apparently the first win that the vet side had had for a long time. And you know, I turned to the coach and said, what do you mean you haven't won for a while? It's easy, you know. <laughs> one game, one win, one goal, that was, um, and one kick. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's about the size of it. Having that, uh, that, that uh, opportunity to come back and play footy and, and to get the mindset and, and say, right, I, I am committed to this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite, a, it's quite a, a, an obstacle, but also quite satisfying once you think, oh, I can do this again. Maybe not as well as I used to, but certainly, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good feeling. I think what, what it was, because everyone worked together that day, and it was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And we beat a team that was fairly fierce at it and won a few premierships. Um, yeah, I was pretty happy with that. We got a victory. We had a, we sung the song, and I learnt the song by that point. I knew it <laughs> that, that time around. So, no, it was a... Uh, but those guys playing that one game uh, introduced them to the group that we had um, and encouraged them as now 32-year-olds with a few of their other mates for the next season to you know, hit the boom years. Symesy, Big Pete, um, you know, Crapper, Crozzy, um, you know, all these kind of guys started to come down to the club. They started just to feel, you know, um, it was a good club to come to because it had a good social atmosphere. It was funny, it was, you know, sort of talk to the guys throughout that season. I was playing vets and, you know, said, oh, you know, come down next year, come down next year. And, you know, it was always always trying to filter filter it out amongst all the, all the boys. And, um, you know, Rosie was keen. Um, and I think we had a barbecue at his place one night and got everyone around and, you know, sort of put the hard word on them. And, you know, they were all sort of pretty keen. Hutchie was, Hutchie was definitely keen. Um, yeah, we got obviously got Dion and and, and Lammy and and um, I'll never forget Corey McGrath saying the previous year that in 2012 he he sort of said you know like you've got Crapper and you've got Edo and he goes you know they're they're once you get one of the dickheads you get them all and he was right <laughs> so they had me and Edo Edo's not a dickhead but um, you know and then everyone else just sort of you know just got the bug and. Just come down. It was it's a good way to hang out, and um, yeah, it was just it was just there was just yeah, it was huge really. We to think that all those blokes were going to jump on board and you know really buy in, and, and everyone loved it. It was great. I um, had a call from Crapper and Rosie, who decided to have a bit of a 
bonding session one night on a Friday night, a few beers and a few beers and pizzas at Rosie's house, and uh, went along to that, and it was was more than just a few beers. It was a sort of a recruitment drive to try and recruit some of the older guys that that have been around the club for so long and played so much football together to come and play vets football. So I sort of thought, you know what, that sounds like a bit of good fun, especially when they said that it was 45 minutes of training once a week and then you're in, you know, drinking, drinking stubbies and cans for the rest of the time and just having a good time playing once a fortnight. So, yeah, loved it. As soon as I started playing with my, the mates that I've played so much football with, I just, uh, yeah, loved it. In our first pre-season camp, I think we had, <coughs> what, remember, 20 blokes? Yeah, easy. Good turnout. Easy. I reckon, yeah. And, um, Which is more we'd had the, to any training session ever before. Well, it was double any training session, uh, probably more, I think training session was normally five to seven. Yeah. If you got 10, well then you could start doing bigger kicking drills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but that pre-season camp, and then I think the feeling kind of changed as much as I think everyone just said, oh, okay, well, at least we know we can play a game for the year. So, yeah, it was a good start. Yeah, with 2013, it was, it was, it was quite funny. We started off with um, yeah, totally different. Um, it, was, it was a whole new group of guys that, that, that had come down. Um, yeah, we still had our probably 10 to 12 core guys that were here. Um, but yeah, it was exciting to see these, these new guys come into the fold. They were all good footballers. Um, yeah, almost from round one, the level of, of playing ability, and that went for, for everyone because everyone lifted. Um, yeah, you had guys like Fetter. You know, he's at training, at pre-season training. He's hitting you on the tit. You want to hit him on the tit. It's as simple as that. Right, so it was head down, really, really concentrate. Whereas years gone by, yeah, pfft, if you spray it, meh, shit happens. You didn't want to do that. Well, I know I didn't. Right, I wanted to hit them, do the handballs, do whatever you got to do, exactly the same way as they're doing it. 2013 season, uh, first... First game, I was sort of didn't know what to expect. Um, coming from playing fourth division seniors, I sort of thought it'd be sort of on par with the with the speed and and all that sort of stuff. But uh, it wasn't really the case. I thought after playing with my mates who we'd played so much football together with, uh, realised that we're a hell of a lot better than than uh, a lot of these sides are going to be. And the whole thing is like no one knew each other as well. Um, it was still a bit of that's the new guys and that's the old guys sort of thing going on. Yeah, feel, kind of um, still feel, feeling each other out. Yeah. yeah. It took, a, like, a few games. Like, the first game we won, but with the talent of footballs that we had, um, it sort of helped. And then it took a few games for it to sort of all gel together really well. Mm. But it wasn't until we played that first game at Forest Hill and, and we went out there and, and I think the year before we'd lost by 100 points and then we went out and beat them by 100 points. There was no doubt that after six or seven years of battling, of battling, we stood on that bench and went, wow, wow, I think this is, I think this is real, you know? I think it was probably just a gradual thing, but I think, you know, maybe we, we got, when everyone did get together, there was probably a, maybe a little bit of a quietly confident sort of thing that we were gonna be okay. And because we'd played football together for so long as well, a lot of the guys, well, you sort of, you just sort of, you, you gel a lot quicker, I guess. There was no pressure of expectation of, of winning because of finishing last the previous year. It, and it was, it was, it was good to play against sides that were surprised to play us it, from one year being shit and from the next year almost not being the benchmark because there was no benchmark. We were just good. Yeah. So that was that was a good feeling as well. Yeah, we lost the one game to to Scoresby that year. Um, we played at their ground. They had the clock on their scoreboard. Minute and a half to go. It was still anybody's game, um, but they did very well. So you're on a, you're on a winning streak, um, and you have a loss. It's 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 almost a positive. It's it's it gives you a bit of a reality check that you're not that good. Leading up to that final series, we we sat as a group on the ground as a bunch of mates and just talked about 
what are our expectations what are we thinking what are the experience that we've all had which was quite unique you know really good coaching i guess by whitey and uh and crapper being leaders in the group because there were so many of them that have won so many premierships together yet i was sitting there going never played a game of Pornos footy in my life i you know played at Chernesaw Park and through the junior ranks we never played finals um, played at Croydon Footy Club and of course the year they won the flag uh, was my first year of senior footy and I didn't, I'd never got an opportunity to play that, those games really um, and of course my whole senior footy career was in first division uh, playing at Croydon, Croydon Footy Club tr- trying to avoid relegation so I actually sat there on the Oval on the Wednesday night before our first semi-final. And I think it was the first time I'd actually told everyone in the group that I've never played a single game of finals footy. There was blokes in there going, well, I've played like five junior premierships and six bloody senior premierships. And, you know, this is, this is another great opportunity. And we love September football. You know, it's festini season. <laughs> and so I'm just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't even watch September football. I don't play it. So, uh, albeit giggle and laugh and have some fun with your mates, September football, it's soon become, oh, I probably actually want to win this. I want to be good at this. I want to bust my ass and do this. So final time comes around. Um, I obviously played North Ringwood in the first final, which was a very close contest in the end. Um, but yeah, everyone was pretty flat during the, the first half of the game. Uh, I think everyone just sort of expected to win. You know, finishing on top of the ladder. North Ringwood finished fourth. Um, but everyone sort of just expected it to happen and sort of went out there a bit flat. And uh, I, I actually remember the, the warm-up thinking, geez, I hope these blokes switch on. Um, but then, you know, obviously we came, came home with the goods, meaning that we were playing the grand final in a fortnight's time. Um, so the build-up into, into that week... Um, we knew Baronia was was a good team. Um, we'd played Baronia in the last round of, of the season, home and away season and beat them. Um, didn't beat them comfortably, but we we put them away, which was which was a good just a good boost. But to go to Lilydale um, as a uh, as a grand final, um, never having played in any any kind of grand final before. Um, yeah, as I said earlier on, I've done individual type things and and done done quite well with individual type things. But yeah, to to um, to go there with you know twenty four other blokes um, plus you know staff and all that kind of gear, it was just it was I don't know what the word is euphoric. It was it was unreal. Um, it was just an incredible feeling. Um, yeah, just just all the all the hype at home. You know, I was like a, a, a cat on a hot tin roof. You know, it was even even the kids. You know, like I got older kids, and and they were excited. You know, so we we, we went there and to go out and do the warm up and get all those shitty kicks out of the way, get all those nervous kicks out of the way, um, and then to go out and then yeah, line up in the with the national anthem and, and everything. It was just it was absolutely amazing to go from wooden spoon in 2012 to just being in that. Whether we won or lost. Just being in that setting, playing in a grand final the following year, um, yeah, it was just, it was just incredible. I remember it clear as day that that grand final day, leading the grand final day, I, I always made myself a promise for my own grand final I won't make the mistakes that I made previously, and that was the first grand final was under 18s, and I was probably still a little bit timid, and got to got to the crunch of the game, and I, I didn't want the ball to come near me. So you kind of think, oh shit, I'm the ball coming here, and it kind of did, and you know you kind of give it to someone else and get rid of it quickly. Where this one, I said, nah. Um, for me, I just I had to make sure we win the premiership. I just wanted the one of them secure that yes, this is me done. I think the only way for me to do that was to um, I got the ball, I made sure I owned it. Who was it? Someone did their um, was it Holly did his quad or something in the warm up of that semi final and pulled out. So. Like bloke like that, like knew that we were on our way. He's played in all of the, you know, years of shit fighting with sixteen on the ground and getting bashed and beaten up, and um, and 
he he would have been right to play, he's, but he didn't want to let the team down. So that semi final, he felt a slight twinge, and went put his hand up and said, "Oh no, nah, I'll be, I'm not right. Um, I don't want to damage it in this game. I'll give it the two weeks and." Uh, I'll be right for grand final day. So there's huge tension because there was guys that were borderline, you know, on the fringe, um, coming back from injury, who were good footballers and deserved to be there. Yeah, someone had to miss out who'd probably played that semi final, and you know there was two blokes, and and it's really unfortunate because they they're good blokes and they were good footballers. Well, I'd never played in grand final four, played in a few final series, but always lost. Uh, never made it through to the big dance. Um, and yeah, coming into the, the final, uh, the grand final, I remember a few hard choices had to be made, as in players to be cut. Yeah. Uh, a few unhappy people about that. Unfortunately, it comes down to the, you know, we're there to win a grand final, which, look, in my eyes, a grand final is everything. Uh, always had a conversation with my wife that if we were having a baby and playing in the grand final, which would it be? And it'd be the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty big you deal. Said that you do have to say, well, I've got four. I do so. have four, yeah. So, <laughs> and I'll, I'd play in all four grand finals. <laughs> Sorry, kids, if you see this. Um, but no, it was pretty daunting, you know. I'd never lined up with your teammates and listened to the national anthem or... Yeah done any of that and you know going out there with the expectation of coming home with the big the big trophy is pretty full on all set for a start here at Lillardale Sports Oval for the 2013 BJS Vets Grand Final between Baronia and South Croydon a great uh, high pressure start to this Vets Grand Final ball thrown up once again punch forward for South Croydon this is what they need a little bit of a run on We'll get the ball back here. Great work there from Hutchison to get the handball away. Now the Doggies have got a bit of room to run in. Fantastic Shepard came off the back of the ball as they went inside 50. Bouncing ball off the bottom of the pack. Gibb handballed off to Lamb and a fantastic first goal on the board for the Doggies. And Lamb has his first. Travis Lamb. Pretty tight angle. Comes in now. On the right boat, sets it, sail. He's very happy with it, so too the crowd. He has his second, he has South Croydon's second. And South Croydon move on to 2-1-13. Coronia one behind. Dwyer wastes no time trying to get it into the empty forward line and a great mark taken by Brett Ratray. Comes in now, Brett Ratray for Baronia's first. And makes no mistake with that one. And Baronia have their first. Cut off by Michael Clancy. Clancy handballs off. Manages to find a teammate in Thompson. Who kicks inside forward 50. Bottom of the pack to Wire. Snaps around on the right boot. Looking for a teammate. Couldn't quite find him on that occasion. Still a chance now for Baronia as they try and bustle through the pack. Lehman on that occasion. Gets through five. Uh, it'll be a free kick. But the goal will be paid on top of that. Manages to get the kick away. Inside forward 50, great mark taken there by Nathan Dwyer. Just on the outskirts of the 50 metre arc, it looks like he's going to back himself here. And what would be an extremely important goal. Decides to go short and finds the target. Great mark taken there and a bit of pressure from Thompson. Comes in now. On the left boot, a lot of left footers in this Baronia forward line. And on that occasion it hasn't worked in, it has worked in his favour to become straight back through Ryan. Ryan looking for a teammate, couldn't quite find him, and a good mark taken in defence by David Roach. He goes long to the outer side, sets it up on the wing. It'll be Lucas Davies. Under the wing, puts his teammate under a lot of pressure, and Kennedy gets hit late. I think Chris Burgess knew he'd hit him pretty hard on that occasion. No malice in it whatsoever. Of well, there's. I think it's maybe 10 minutes of the second quarter. I'm completely, I'm blank. Got nothing. Zero uh, memory. Because um, I ran around Rochi and he didn't handball it to me, the bastard, because I've seen it in the video. Uh, and he chips it out wide to Lucas. 
but I keep running on and then Lucas popped it down the ground to me and I bloody uh, didn't think about what might have been coming the other way just followed the ball and caught the ball but when I caught it Brainy bloke was coming the other way bigger stronger than me knocked me out yeah obviously severe concussion uh, ended up with um, fractured eye sockets and three major breaks within the cheekbone um, three plates 15 screws um, puts it all back together and, and fixes it up um, lucky to not lose any vision or, or function of the eye took to when you know Ken has got knocked out I think we might have been 10 points down or we were, we were battling a little bit Chatfield just assessing his options telling his players to go long it's exactly where he wants to kick it towards the top of the goal square hot spot football and a fantastic mark taking in the Bulldogs forward though that's exactly what they needed comes in now off the right boot, sets it sail, never looked like missing. Umpire made it look a little bit more controversial than it was. But Travis Lamb has his third goal. He has his side's third goal for the afternoon, and they move on to 3 3 21. Baronia 3 6 24. And after a fair bit of control for Baronia early on in the quarter with six score and five scoring shots so far, they only lead this game by three points. And good work at the bottom of the pack, Michael Clancy. Still trying to get it away. Kick off the boot there. Came from Crapper out to the outer side. Two on two. Good work and a good bit of pressure there from Hammersley. And he manages to take it away. Inside forward 50. Bouncing ball. And Lamb just uh, making, <laughs> making the most of an opportunity. He's probably going to go through anyway. But Travis Lamb puts his fourth on the board. And four, uh, sorry, two within the space of a minute. And this football game just got interesting. Ferguson. Short chip kick over the top, and a solid mark taken there out of the lead was Brett Ratray. Comes in now, sets it on the left boot, and looks pretty good. He's happy with it. Goal umpire sticks two fingers out in front of his body and signals Brett Ratray's second goal. Now the umpire restarts play. Tap down on this occasion, good work at the bottom of the pack there was Garrett. Got his handball away, Spencer. Spencer inside forward 50. Manages to find a leading target. Fantastic work there from Travis Lamb out on the lead. Number 25 it'll be. You can almost call this goal, no goal number five from five for South Croydon. And the lead back for the Bulldogs. Does so now. Wasn't quite ha as happy as he would have liked, but it does the job. 5-3-33, now the Bulldogs. They lead once again by three points. Davies kicks short, finds Dudley. Dudley out wide, out of sight of the ground. Here at the LSO, Tim Chatfield. Chatfield short over the top, finds his target. Now they're starting to move the ball a bit better now. The uh, doggies. Roach kicks short once again, finds Rose. Rose, now they're trying to open up the field a little bit. Fantastic work there from Hutchinson. Marks, chip kick short inside forward 50, all by himself with Simon Hammersley on that occasion. And pretty much an open forward line gives back to Hutchinson, who lines up from 35 and manages to slot a fantastic 10-goal home for the Bulldogs. Under a lot of pressure as they just try and find a bit of space here at the LSO. Towards the forward 50 arc, couldn't quite take it, running back on the flight with the ball where was Hutchinson. Goes inside forward, 50, Spencer gives the handball off. Now they've found a bit of space. A chance here for Southport and put another one on the board. Great work there from Jason Hutchison. Finishes off all class. And the seventh goal on the board for South Croydon. Thompson will win the free kick. Goes inside forward, 50 in the Rat Ray direction. Can't take the mark once again. Small spills out the back. Dwyer, wrong side for the right footer, but manages to try and slot it through. Bouncing ball, hits the post. Would have been the goal of the afternoon there for Nathan Dwyer. So it's been called a goal. Finds a teammate there in Ferguson who goes towards the forward 50. Rat Ray. Fantastic show of strength and takes the mark. Just to make it a one goal ball game coming into three quarter time. Comes in. Sends the kick on its way. And makes no mistake from the outset off the left boot. Brett Rat Ray has his third. 
And now we've got a game on our hands once again. Just when you thought that uh, all was done and dusted for Veronia. We were lucky that we converted pretty quickly and got ourselves a, look, a score on the board that they had to chase. But yeah, then they started coming back and then all of a sudden a couple of goals rolled over from them. And it was, um, the game was on, wasn't it? Yeah. It was really on. South Croydon looked to put another one on the board in this inside their forward 50. He came off the back, snapshot around the goal there from Lamb, and it's gone straight through the middle. So Travis Lamb has goal number six for the afternoon, and a very handy goal in the context of this one. It moves South Croydon onto 8 6 52, and they once again open up that what is now a two goal gap. Punched away by Davies. Over the top, Spencer. Spencer and was uh, taken after he kicked it. And it looks like Travis Slam, right place at the right time. Comes in now, Travis Slam. Sends it home and an 18 point lead in favour of South Croydon. Travis Slam has six goals. His side has nine. They move on to 9 6 60, leading this one now by 18 points. We're only at 6 6 42. And a couple of uh, costly brain fades. And the commentary side wing. One on one, good punch over the back there from David Clancy. Gives Baronia another shot at trying to get it. Crapper doesn't want to borrow that. He tries to get it away, gets it off to Davies. Running through the middle now, South Croydon. Kick out wide, looking for Crossland. So on that occasion was Hammersley. Under a fair bit of pressure, gets it away, finds Jamison who handballs over the top. Fair bit of room to run in here, Rose. Kicks it on the right boot, sets it up to the man of the moment. And Travis Lamb can line up for goal number seven of the afternoon. Decides to snap it round the body. And I reckon that's the first shot across the bow for South Croydon that finally hits the spot. Have the balance to do so, James. Inside forward 50, Baronia. And a rat ray takes the mark. Just caught in the right amount of space and Brett Ratray will line up for goal number four. And will waste no time. They need to score quickly and I think Brett Ratray knows that. Quick turn around and sets it on the right boot. Just dabs it through. And Baronia's fir first goal for the final term. Ratray's fourth for the afternoon. And not done with yet. Uh, the Baronia Hawks Football Club. In the last quarter it was... Um they were coming home hard, real hard. It was just, I, I remember ending the game, I was, I was exhausted, absolutely exhausted. And it was just constantly in the back of my mind. It was just in, it was out, it was in, and it was out. And I was thinking, when is this going to stop? <laughs> this siren's got to go, and because we've got time on, um, everyone's out in their legs, and they've got momentum. Decides under pressure to kick back across goal. Under a lot of pressure, but manages to take the mark there, Ferguson. Dropped to what he probably should have taken. Jamison picks up, gives the handball away to White. White, the big man with the dreadlock, sends it on its way. And a great goal there from Dale White. Sporting the dreadlocks and the beard. Fantastic work. Moves his side on to 11-9-75. I still remember a beautiful friend of ours. She's a, 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 an American Canadian. And she, um, she came to watch her first game of football. And... Um, we won't talk about it, but it was when I kicked that goal at the end. Um, um, I kicked a goal right on the end on the siren. Um, Hachi passed the ball to me, and um, it was right. It's funny, Lamy had kicked eight goals yeah. that day and, and been a superstar, and uh, I kicked this one goal at the end, and all the guys came and jumped all over me and stuff. And um, I was telling everyone to go back to the, go back, getting it. It's not over. We've got to play. I was doing the coach thing. And, and I just remember Trav Lamb was crying. Trav Lamb was looking at me and he was crying. And I was like, get back, it, it, it's not over. And Lamby's looking at me and he's going, it's over, mate, it's over. And I'm like, I went back to the middle, they threw the ball up in the air and the siren went and it was over. And everyone just ran straight back and it was piles on again. And it was just an amazing feeling. And I remember after the game, Alison said to me, she walked over with no comprehension of, uh, of local football or old blokes football or anything and she goes did I just witness one of the best moments in your life and I said I think you did so it's just a matter of time now for South Croydon time to celebrate that is for the dogs there it is the 2013 premiers in the veterans South Croydon with a fantastic win
Yeah, I played in six losing grand finals in my senior career. So from after, un, well, sorry, from under 18s through to when I retired, six losing grand finals. Um, I did play in a uh, Lightning Premiership in under 12s with uh, the likes of Rosie, Lammy, I think maybe City. There was, there was a fair few of us that played in under 12s Lightning Premiership together. Um, but so I'd never had that feeling of success from a from winning a flag. You know, I've, I remember the feelings over the years of winning a preliminary final, getting into a grand final. Um, but after playing that day, it was so close. It was so sort of heart wrenching on you know wrenching on the strings, thinking that it's really it's not it's not a walk in the park. We have to fight for this. We actually actually have to fight a lot harder than we fought all year to win this game. Especially with the, you know, everyone sort of feeling a bit flat, thinking that it was just going to happen. Um, but yeah, once you know, I chipped one off to Whitey, and he slotted it through the middle with a couple of minutes to go. And uh, when that siren went, it just uh, it was just the most unbelievable feeling, um, most unbelievable feeling in the world. I reckon it was probably one of the best, yeah, one of the best days, even though you know it's vets. It's not senior footy, but to play with mates that I played with for so many years and, and new mates and all that sort of stuff, it was just, yeah, it was excellent. Yeah, the siren went. I, um, for me, it was relief, and I think, holy shit, I've got, got to just run a premiership. And it's taken, took me, how I was, 35? It took me 35 years to get a premiership on my belt. So for me, it was, yeah, I did get a little bit emotional. That's... But it was just, you remember, it's all the hard work. You play all this game of footy and you love it. And you only get, you normally only get one, some people only get one shot of it. And that was our shot. And we just had to make sure we got it and we did. So it was pure relief. And I, I remember that night, my knees, everything, I just, I, my body was, I was stuck. Even though I drank some of the beer and partied like an animal, but I was, I was literally stuffed. Yeah. yeah. But it was good. It was pure relief for me. Because yeah. the whole side was dedicated to each other and to the team and to the coach and to winning and to brushing off all those years of losing and, and the toughness and rolling up with 14 people and getting smashed every week or every fortnight. But they'd still roll up. They'd still come back the next week. And it was uh, it was a desire to, to get off the bottom and win and yeah, it was a very, very emotional day and a very great, a fantastic feeling. I don't think I had anything left in the tank once that siren went. Uh, and same again, it was just relief, um, shock, disbelief <laughs> that, you know, you've come from winning one game to uh, securing yourself a premiership after 35 years of football. Yeah. It's pretty full on. the afternoon a couple of mates who were watching from the crowd sort of texting the CEO I was going at hospital and they were giving me score updates and, and advised that you know we got up and we had won the premiership and um you know yeah uh, one, one of the one of the enjoyable enjoyable things that I lo love on the video is my little nephew Jimmy um uh he when I mean number was called out and of course you know Whitey's like, oh, he's at hospital, he got knocked out. But Jimmy, his little nephew, he wandered up and went, oh, that's my uncle. <laughs> and uh, and they gave him the medal and brought that to the hospital afterwards um, to give it to me. Um, yeah, it was special because the, probably all the family sort of knew there was probably something I've been looking for me all life. Um, yeah, it's not, it's, and, yeah, it's still pride of place, just up on a shelf at home. In, in the same way where you have external pressure from the senior club, 
that everyone's aesthetic, you know, all the comedy and all that sort of stuff. The 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 vets was different is because it's almost like we won it for ourselves, and and we all knew that it was we were just there together. There wasn't this external group patting you on the back and saying, "Oh, you're the best ever," and you're this and that. There was no need for that. It was just us enjoying the year, having a drink, and just yeah, just enjoying the win. The captain wearing number nine, Frank Kramer. You know, I was, I was proud as punch, really. Just played in the flag at 33 or 34 with, you know, a lot of my best mates. And, um, you know, some people might look at vets and sort of say, oh, it's only vets, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, I thought it was, I was wrapped, really. And maybe because I was captain as well, that probably meant a bit extra. You know, I'd never sort of been in that position ever in my entire life or career, like, you know, where I was captain or leader of anything really like that. So um, that meant a bit extra and sort of just, yeah, that, that meant a bit. The other thing that was really great about that, that year too is in 2013 we still had some of those really core, you know, guys from the dark days. We got like Steve Lauder and um, blokes played in a, in a premiership that they would never have dreamt they were going to play in a premiership. They came to a club that was terrible and got to play in a premiership, you know? Um, there is something to be said about that. It was my first premiership in 2013. Um, I had played in a couple of losing ones. I'd captained a couple of losing ones and been dropped for two winning ones. And um, yeah, there we were, Brett and I. Brett captained it and I coached it. I didn't even really know what I was doing. And uh, there we were holding this cup and it was pretty special. It was a pretty special day. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to go into the 2013 South Court Football Club.